So welcome to our, our final keynote of the day. Um, we're really fortunate to have uh, Helen Dickinson, who is the Chief Executive of the British Retail Consortium. Welcome, Helen. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. And um, I know that you've been with the British Retail Consortium for almost eight years now. And uh, obviously, this last year has probably been a, a very interesting year for you, if uh, interesting is, is the right word. Um, but before we talk about that in, in more detail, maybe you'd be kind enough just for those who are less aware to, to let us know a little bit more about the British Retail Consortium, what it does, and obviously your role within that as Chief mm -hmm. Executive. Thank you. Well, a pleasure to be here. Hello, everybody. Um, I, so the BRC is the lead trade body for the retail industry. So we are a membership organization. So many retail companies are members of the BRC. Um, category, channel, uh, completely uh, irrelevant. So we have everything from um, Amazon, ASOS, to, uh, to Sainsbury's, Boots, Marks and Spencer's, River Island, uh, Reese, and sort of everything in between. Um, so lots of different retail businesses, different sizes, different shapes. Uh, and our job as the, uh, the trade organization for the industry is really to do two things. It's to be, to be the voice of the industry. Um, so whether that's in the media or with stakeholders, and secondly, to try and influence things that will make a difference to the retail industry. Our mission is all around making a positive difference to, to retail and the customers it serves. Uh, and the key for a trade association is really to, to do that in a way that adds value to the membership, because then they, mm. they pay their membership. And not only do you do things that are good for the industry, but you also give them networks, guidance, information, data, uh, that is uh, useful for them as companies. And the theory is then they keep coming back and they uh, renew their subscriptions. And so my job over the last six months <laughs> took on a whole new meaning. Uh, and I, I agree with you. I'm not sure interesting <laughs> is quite the right word, but it, 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 my job has been uh, certainly, or the BRC's job has been super clear, which is really to make sure that government absolutely understood uh, what was happening in retail and what needed to happen in order to um, ensure that the industry was as best placed as it, as it could be to, to get through the crisis. So using our voice, using that influence, and then secondly, to provide the forums, the information, the networks, the places that people actually came just to show that they weren't alone in, in some of the issues that they were facing. And I'm really, really proud of what we've achieved over that time. We've got more new members in the last six months than I've had in the last six years. Mm. Uh, we did a CEO survey. We've got a great MPS score. My challenge now is uh, one of my KPIs is to increase it uh, year on year. It's kind of like, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. We've had some great feedback. Um, so out of a, you know, a pretty, uh, well, a, a really challenging backdrop. I think it's it's sort of proven the point about why trade associations dis exist and why it's so important to have like a focal point where everybody's input can come into one place and then you can interact with government and get them to do stuff. Yeah, well, that, that's really interesting. Thank you. And, and obviously retailers have never been shy of coming forward vocally about uh, what's on their minds. And, and as you say, the last six months have been challenging in many different ways. So what have been the themes that, that retailers have been coming to you with? And, and how have you been responding to, to those concerns and, and challenges? Well, I think, uh, I think one, of the, one of the words of the crisis is agility, isn't it? And I think, you know, we've had to uh, be agile. And uh, my other favorite word of the crisis is pivot. Uh, so really to pivot our, our, the way that we operate. Um, so the, the, the sorts of topics have been like so diverse. So if you remember in the early days, it was all about the food industry. You know, remember that time when, you know, there was photos of, of shells of, uh, you know, without toilet paper on them, the country was gonna run out of, of toilet paper and run out of food. Um, so, you know, we worked really hard with the food industry to uh, and with government to remove some of the barriers to getting more stuff into more uh, shops up and down the country to um, enable us all to be fed. And everybody who works in food retail has, you know, had 
um, a real, have really sort of risen to the challenge. So we should be very mm -hmm. grateful for the work that they've done. They've been defined as key workers, so a major part oh, of yeah, sort of the, yeah. the infrastructure of the country. Uh, and then across non-food, um, the issues have been, you know, as broad as you know, inputting and trying to shape the, um, the, the job retention scheme, the furlough scheme, because obviously that was vital for, for those um, stores that needed to close. Uh, and obviously HR teams have been very, very involved in that. Lots of stuff that's been property related, rates that were the rates holiday up front, which was um, a great result. Um, but rents uh, and what the future of the relationship between landlord and tenants is going to look like, particularly given that the way that many of us are working now is different, which means that there is many fewer people coming into particularly to cities up and down the country mm -hmm. so um, a lot to do with rent rates and property issues um, financing uh, you know getting loans and ability for um, liquidity into the industry so I mean that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg I mean we've we've had more um, media um, uh, questions and uh, input uh, over the course of the last again six months than we've had you know in the last few years uh, and we've done more forums uh, you know I'm doing a CEO call still every week with um, I'm getting between sort of 40 and 60 CEOs at the height of the crisis of about 80 90 joining week in week out to find out the latest whatever was happening um, so, so what working digitally has done is sort of democratize the membership and just make it accessible to, to everybody and um, people have really valued the information that they've had and knowing um, you know, what's happening next and being able, as I said earlier, to, to share their experiences with, with others and know that they're just not alone. It's really important for you know, running businesses or yes. you know, having senior roles is a lonely place sometimes, isn't it? Absolutely right. And, and you make a few points there which are highly valid. And obviously with a, a, an HR population um, attending the summit, the, you know, the skill set required to, to run this, this new focus on, on, yeah. on, on, on retail is, is mm. critical. So what are you seeing as, as the, the current set of skills that's required mm. and maybe the future focus on a skill set that, that's changed and is evolving to make retail a success? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, there's no doubt, is there, that leaders need to be more agile and more resilient than they've ever had to be before. Um, because people are needing to make, you know, big decisions like really quickly, mm. um, certainly in the height of the sort of emergency, but still now. And so getting your hands on the right data, um, being able to collaborate uh, within the business, particularly if there are restraints around how, you know, we can interact with each other physically because of social distancing or working from home. Um, so collaborating both with each, with, you know, with each other and across the industry. So, so I think the the sort of the, the, those leadership skills around adaptability, around innovation, around quick decision making, um, are going to be really um, uh, the sort of vital skills as we look forward. And you know, but as as lots of businesses are really thinking about how their actual structure of the business should be in the future then um, obviously you know, those in the HR teams have got a vital role to play in in what that might look like uh, and we already were seeing a transformation in retail weren't we before mm -hmm. all of this was happening you know the the rise of digital automation artificial intelligence uh, and um, online and digitization has been a gigantic theme of the pandemic. Online retail sales and capacity has, has doubled in the, in the food industry from about 7% of, of retail sales to about 14, 15. And in non-food it is now, you know, uh, it was about 25, 30. Now it's about 40% of, of non-food sales are done digitally. So um, while We've seen some some pretty high profile job losses. So I think, you know, there will be fewer jobs in retail in the future. There is a, an opportunity um, for, for, for the jobs that uh, remain in retail to be, you know, to be to make be better jobs, higher paid jobs, more analytical jobs, 
more digital jobs and actually more customer facing jobs. So, so I think that there's, there's, there's a whole lot in there in terms of um, the skill bases of the future, but most importantly, I think it still comes back to sort of agility and, and resilience at the end of the day. <laughs> and and I, I mean, I totally agree with you. However, let me just challenge you that, that many sectors would probably say that same skill set applies to them as well. Um, so, you know, it's really important ac across the world that those, those, those skill sets apply. How do we attract people into retail specifically? with those mm. skill sets. Um, because retail has taken a hammering in lots of different ways. There's opportunities clearly, but it's taken a hammering both from a PR point of view as well as physically. So how do we attract them to, into our sector? Well, I think there were, so we have a very young workforce across retail. So about a quarter of the people who work in retail are under 25. So you know, these are people who are in early parts of their careers and are open to what that career might look like. But you're right, you know, we've, got, we've got a perception problem, right? But, you know, why would um, somebody who's got great um, tech skills think of retail as a sort of default place that they might go? Mm. Uh, so I think there is, you know, there, I mean, we've um, uh, last year, or maybe it was even the year before, we launched a... Um, uh, a website called Rethink Retail, whose job it was to sort of profile some of the, the sort of unexpected jobs, if you like, from the sort of default that everybody might have that working in retail necessarily means working in shops. I mean, obviously those that uh, work in shops have a great um, role to do in terms of the interaction with customers, but there is, you know, there is the, the sort of list of types of jobs um, across the industry is, so diverse and i think it is a real um a sort of testament to the uh the sort of social mobility opportunities that sit within retail that people come in from all sorts of backgrounds and move across and within businesses and gain those different skills so i think there's you know we've got more work to do and how we overcome the sort of default for, for you know for that young 16, 18 year old that, that thinks that, um, you know, joining a, a sexy tech company is, is a better place uh, for, their, for their tech skills than, um, than, than retail. Because certainly given what has been accelerated by the crisis, the opportunities absolutely are there within the industry. Yeah, we hear a lot about opportunities and the, and the face of retail is changing, isn't it, for the positive? I mean, there, there's so, so much innovation, I think, going on that we did hear before the pandemic, but clearly the pandemic has accelerated yeah. that change as well. So, yeah. so that, that's lovely. And, and let's just talk about that and, and maybe finish on this note of optimism. Where do you see those opportunities? How is retail changing for the better? What are the positive things that you're hearing and your opinion of, of, of how it's moving forward? And what, what's the good that's coming out of this current situation? Well, I think, yeah, as you say, that out of the sort of the chaos and the emergency, there is sort of real opportunity because if we reflect back over the last sort of five or six months, many people have said that they've achieved more in the last sort of five months than they achieved in the last five years. So coming back to that pivot word, they've pivoted their operations um, and um, have accelerated some of the things that they were trying to do over a much longer period of time. So I, I do believe that we are at a bit of a, you know, a reset moment. Um, a reset moment in terms of the sort of relationship between dis digital and physical retailing. So maybe now is the time that come that they will actually you know, be much more connected. That has implication for places, for the property industry um, that, uh, that we all need to work through. And I also think it's a reset moment for how we work. The, the you know, thinking much more about um, uh, the environmental and the, the social impact of the, the type of uh, business that we want to work in. I mean, we saw, you know, with the rise of Black Lives Matter, you know, diversity and inclusion has been on the agenda for a long time, but the, the momentum that has been achieved on the back of the pandemic, I think provides a real sort of springboard to reset back to a different, a different trajectory perhaps than the one that you know business generally and, and maybe retail was on before 
And so on that note, I think the HR community is, is absolutely vital in helping um, and leading and being part of how businesses, you know, move forward on that trajectory. Because it's all about how you, you know, build engagement across your workforce, take people with you against, um, against the sort of a future, a future vision, um, and really ensure that the culture and the behaviors within the business are, are ones that are um, at, at all driving in that same direction. So, so I, I, it's, it's always challenging, isn't it, to get the balance right, but uh, there are there are you know plenty of challenges ahead um but i also i i think uh, the sort of the, the sentiment behind your question which is that there is also you know we need to try and find some buried in all the negativity of the backdrop some some positives and all, all yes all founded on on the pride that we should take from the hard work and the effort and, and everything that has gone on through the pandemic and the crisis so far I think the industry has showed its best. I mean, the day that the lady, I don't know if you can remember, but the lady from Waitrose was on the front page of Vogue. I mean, it, that was, it, well, it wasn't only a beautiful picture, it was kind of, so we've had, you know, what the food industry has done in terms of feeding the nation and proving that, you know, we have a very resilient um, uh, a food industry and a whole bunch of, of colleagues who work within it that could really rise to the challenge in the early days of the pandemic when we didn't know what we were facing into. I mean, they, you know, they're brave people. And then the rest of the industry, the fact that um, online was such a lifeline, the fact that um, shops opened safely in the middle of June um, and have been trading, you know, successfully for the subsequent months. I mean, we have a lot, a lot to be to be very, very proud of in this industry, and I think that uh, you know we should pay we should pay respect for, to to those that are on the front line and to the work again coming back to the HR community that the people you know have done um, within the the sort of the the support and the leadership that they've had to show around you know things like the furlough scheme, the communication, and managing communications in the business in a you know when probably most of the people in the head office have been working from home I mean you know, wow I mean it's great it's you know it's great stuff isn't it wonderful well look that's a wonderful place for us us to finish not only our conversation but uh, clearly in our, our our session for the whole of the day so thank you very much indeed for your time Helen that's been fantastic to talk to you and uh, given our audience a, a great deal to think about so thank you so much for your time thank you Thank you.